empty trailer with a winch on it, that can only mean one thing. Leaking out of the tires as they rotate. <laughs> <laughs> That'll probably be fine. I'll back up here and we can winch it right on. So this here is what I'm told is a 1946 Case VAC. I just got this off of the, basically the original farm. The fella's dad bought it brand new back in what he was saying was 1946. So this is technically a one owner tractor. It was sitting in the barn there for about 30 to 40 years, not running. It was sitting up on those blocks. So as you would imagine, some things are rough around the edges. The engine is seized. Um, don't know much else about it. Uh, the rear rims have fluid in them and that's not great. I think it's got the original, like three of the original tires. It's got the original Goodyear's on the back, I believe. And the left front, I believe, is an original as well. But I didn't do much looking on the thing. And I don't know much about these. I think the hoods come up. Take the fuel cap off. Well, there's a good uh, idea of the shape that's in. It has gas in it, actually, but it's very, very old and stinky. 
believe this, yep, this all tips up. Looks like it's still got the 40 year old battery in it. It's got a nice mouse pack rat nest. It still has antifreeze in it. So that's good to know. So nothing should be frozen or broken. It looks uh, pretty clean inside the engine there. No condensation up top here. I believe there would be a piece to go over the uh, spark plugs there in the push rod tubes. It did come with the original front crank, but like I said, I, I pushed on it and it was, it, it seized up. It's been in that barn and it's had this horizontal exhaust on it. So there's a good chance I'll be able to get it loose and uh, get it running, but it's, you know, it's a pretty straight tractor. The grill's a little beat up, but this tin looks pretty good. The fenders look pretty good. This would be the, the gas pedal on them. This is your hydraulics up and down. Ugh. Throttle's a bit sticky. I'm not sure if this is factory or not. I'm not a real big case guy. I don't know that much about them. This will make two in about two weeks that I've owned, though. Oil looks pretty good and clean, but... That could also be that all the sludges settled out 20 years ago. Still has some clutch there. That was in gear when we left, so that came, came out of gear, but it seems to shift all right. Underside of the hood there. That's kind of neat. I've never actually owned one of these. I didn't know they flipped open like that. The manifold looks like it's all pretty intact and in decent shape. This vertical is still good. Looks like the gasket might be blown or rotted away there. Steering has your normal amount of play. Still has two of the case gauges. That one's a little worse for wear. Maybe a start button, choke, your lights. I'm not sure, it's maybe like an auxiliary light. Not sure what these are, actually. This is like a touch button and that one's almost like a start button. See if I can get the serial number cleaned off here. I'm not sure if this is a VA or a VAC. The, the fellas told me it was a VAC, but I'll have to look that up later. Said they used to cultivate two rows with it for a long time. Little wear in the seat. Steering wheel still, you know, it's worn down, but it's it's still all intact. There's some brake there. I'm not sure if they're any good, but it rolls. They're not seized up. Gonna do some more investigating on this tractor before I get it unloaded. I'd like to get some air. Maybe in the tires, see if they'll hold air, pull the spark plugs, look down in the cylinder, see how bad that is. Seen some mouse droppings in that horizontal pipe up there, so I'm hoping there's not a mouse nest in the manifold. Because if that's the case, uh, generally once you get mouse urine in an engine or anything steel related, it corrodes it pretty bad. So hopefully... Uh, it's not too bad to get uh, unseized. But it was sitting up on blocks, so I'm hoping the rubber's okay. It's not cracked inside. I'd rather put some air in them when we loaded it, but I don't believe there was a compressor there. And 
I didn't bring one. Now these rear ones are a bit of a different story and I might regret this. But this one looks like it might take air. Now this wheel's not quite as bad as the other one. It looks like they put a cap on it to seal it. And I've got some, some new valve cores and I'm going to see if I can get this one out and changed out first. There'll probably be a little bit of fluid come out of here, but hopefully not much. Here's an example of the two different styles. So this is the more modern style, and this is what you'll see on older inner tubes from, I don't know, it seems to be 1950s and older will have this style. Doesn't seem to want to run up in there, so I'm going to try to clean it out a little bit. That'll do. Yeah, I'm gonna try the other side. See if we can replace that core. Guess you win eventually. Sprayed a little bit of penetrating oil on these plugs. Gonna pull them out see what we were working with in here. That one looks good. Number one looks good. These are loose. These are not very tight at all. That's a good sign or not? Probably not. Uh, number two has some moisture in it. Number three has some moisture in it. Number four looks pretty good. Take a look in number one. You know, that don't look all that bad. Now, this is number two. And we've got build up right in the spark plug hole. It looks like this piston's right at like top dead center, so it may uh, may not be too bad. It has some buildup, but it looks like mostly carbon buildup. Number four doesn't look bad. I'm going to squirt some penetrating oil in these and maybe get it to work back and forth. I'm not sure how, how seized it really is. It doesn't look that bad. I'm just going to rock it back and forth a little bit and see, see if anything wiggles. I 
of got a little tough spot there. That's moving it backwards. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the valve cover, make sure we don't have any valves sticking up. Boy, that's clean in there. That's nice looking. Little bit of rust. Yeah, that's not sludgy at all. Now I just want to check, make sure all these valves will open. Open, open, open. That one's a little sticky. That one might be sticky. This one's stuck open. And I'm not sure. I've got several tractors that have been sitting for years running. And for some reason, the cases seem to get stickier valves. And they, they've got soft push rods. So like, see that one's stuck open. This one may be stuck open slightly. The best remedy I've got for that is just a little tapping. Tap them down and they'll start popping up. If you look though, you'll see this one, it's got a big gap. And for some reason, the it's adjusted way off but you don't really want to tighten that up in case that's hanging open a little ways and then once it uh quits hanging up it'll shut completely and it'll take up that gap so you don't want to go adjusting before you know what you're really working with that one's working that one's sticky but it's working Yep, those are good. Both of them are on number four are good. So we're not pushing against any stuck valves. That's good to know. We were. We were going somewhere. Both cylinder two and three are at the top of the stroke without any valves open. So I'm going to introduce uh, some air pressure into them. Just gonna hook shop air up and that'll help push it backwards, I believe. a little bit.
I wish there was a way to put a bar in there, but it's too tight to get a wrench and the crank only goes clockwise. It must have wedged up against something as uh, as it was going around. I got it to rotate backwards. Seems like we're back up against the hard spot. I think what's going on is in cylinder two or three, or maybe both of them, there's either some rust or some carbon buildup on the top of the piston, and it's coming up and actually just bottoming out against the head. So I've got some shop air and a shop back here, and I'm gonna try to blow and suck anything that's in there, get it out, and then maybe we can get it to do a full revolution. See if I can get it to make a full revolution now. still coming up hard on something there i'm going to take this rear plate loose so i can engage the pto there's a lever underneath that needs to come up but it hits this plate so they must not have used the pto much they said they cultivated mostly with this should be engaged. I don't want to tear up the PTO shaft, so I'm trying to lever against this, this bolt that I have. The clockwise would be, I want to go counterclockwise since the PTO rotates opposite of the engine, and I'd like to turn the engine backwards. Okay, I can see the top of the pistons. Number two has a little bit of carbon buildup. Number three might. I just don't see what's holding it up. I'm not sure if uh, if any of these valves, like I said, they're a little loose, if maybe something's hanging up in there. Guys, swinging around again, I guess. Yeah, 
hit the spot again. All right, I've worked it back and forth a couple times now, I think. Get past that hard spot. Okay. So, got the engine loose now. Got to see if we got some spark and some fuel and maybe this thing will fire up. Gotta get this mouse nest out of here. Thirty, forty years of corrosion on these battery terminals will let them come loose or not. Probably not. Whoa. You know, some things surprise you. Some things just surprise you. I can't believe that's coming loose. Maybe it's to that old saying, they don't make them like they used to. I don't know. Might not be as lucky on this one. Son of a gun. It's coming loose too. Man, that's kind of crazy. Good old pry bar screwdriver in there. Crusty, crusty. Don't ever hit battery terminals with a hammer. There, got it. Wouldn't recommend doing this either. Man, it's like, I don't know how they got this battery in here. Probably had a little less corrosion on it when they installed it. That's probably my least favorite part of working on this old stuff is the years and years of mouse nests you'll run into. Just nasty. I got the majority of the mouse nest cleaned out of it. Out of the battery tray. Still smells terrible. Um, they've got this little toolbox here. Got the mouse nest sucked out of that. So, throw a battery in it and see if we can get spark. Clean these terminals up. They don't need to be perfect, but uh, hopefully good enough to get enough amperage to turn this little engine over. There's not even much left of this terminal here. I want to make sure I can get this battery back out. I'm going to lay some twine in there beforehand. Don't hit your battery terminals, you know. A 
bad, bad practice. Don't do it. I'll hit the starter button and see if it cranks. I'm going to try to jump a solenoid here. Start switch. Okay, we're not getting connection. So I put a lead on the starter and checked it. And I've got six volts to the starter, so maybe the starter's bad. It didn't have a hand crank in it when I picked it up, so that may have been bad for years, and they were just hand cranking it. But I'm going to see about giving it the old farmer tune-up. Well, seems like a no-go. Well, I'll just bypass worrying about the starter and we'll see if we have power to the distributor. Yep, looks like we've got power to here. So that means we're getting power through the coil. And then it's going to try to re-hang that up there. Hook up the coil wire. Some crusty, crusty old wires here. And I'll grab a spark tester and we'll see if we've got spark. I'll crank this over by hand and see if we have spark. Doesn't look like it. Let's pop the cap off and see about cleaning the points. I'm gonna take the distributor cap off and see what the points look like. Take a piece of sandpaper to them. And usually, if you're careful, you can pop the points open and close and see. See, we got some spark there. So now we should have spark. Inside our cap isn't perfect, but it should be fine to have spark. See if I have spark now. Yep. Nice spark. Just screw these spark plugs back in. Try to remember where your wires went. I don't know, that seems right, doesn't it? Going to try out a highly technical compression test now. has a little, but not much. 
Now that I've got spark, a little bit of compression, I'm going to see what we've got to do to get some fuel into this thing. Now, what I'm hoping for is I can pull this line off and run a temporary tank because this bowl is empty and I'm hoping this carburetor was empty. So you can just put some fresh fuel in it because you've probably heard this tank up here sloshing back and forth. It's full of old stale gas and I really don't feel like messing with it right now. So just to see if this thing will run, I'm gonna put a temporary tank on it and I'll go from there. That was a struggle. Take the bottom plug off the carburetor as well just to see what we're working with. Definitely snug. Not sure if I'll be lucky enough for this to be dry, but gotta give it a try. That's promising. That's real promising. Got the temp tank hooked up and uh, see if we can flush some fuel through that carburetor. Which this is where your main jet pulls from in these carburetors, so you don't you don't want this plugged up. See if it fills up in the needle seats correctly. Nope, nope, it's not, it's overflowing. Sometimes you can force air through the line and uh, disrupt whatever's holding the jet. carburetor off and clean it out. Then I have to take the carburetor loose and uh, see what's stopping it up in there. I think I can just take it loose, kind of tip it sideways and pull the bowl off.
Oh. Eh, that's not what I wanted to do, but. Really was hoping the gasket didn't split, but it'll be all right for what I'm doing here. So the bowl doesn't look bad. Really looks pretty darn clean. I'll spray it out, but it's all right. But the big issue I was having was the float was not floating or at least it wasn't shutting the needle valve so I'll turn the fuel on here and that should go through yeah so that floats up and it's still leaking past float is not in great shape doesn't sound like it has any fuel in it so that's good to know the needle looks to be just fine so it must have a, a piece of crud up in it so I can flush out now Got the carburetor back on, hooked up, fuel's on. We don't have fuel running out now, so I'm gonna go ahead and do one more test on the starter and see if we can get this thing to fire off. Now, before I go crazy cranking this thing, especially with the low compression, uh, I know I've got six volts to the starter, but I'm not sure how many amps, you know, all this corrosion in all of these cables. My thought is, well, let me just go straight from the battery to the starter and I'll see if I can get it to crank over. All right, so the starter's good. Well, I fiddled around with the cables and the contacts on the battery and stuff, and I'm assuming there's corrosion under the coating of these cables that it, the amperage drop is just too much because it's still not kicking that starter in, but at least I know the starter is good to an extent so i'm gonna go ahead and see about cranking this thing up see if it'll start i don't know might start with a couple cranks we'll see just gonna go ahead and try to give it a couple cranks i'm gonna have to watch out because the exhaust comes right out here so it's gonna kind of fly in my face if it starts so uh we'll see what happens It's like really low on compression. So I'm gonna see about getting a 12 volt battery and maybe hook to the starter. All right, I've got this 12 volt battery. Now we'll see if I can turn it over with this.
do that and see if I can drive it around.
1947 Case VAC is purring like a kitten. After sitting for 30 plus years in the corner of that barn, got it running and driving, and it's running great. So, there may or may not be more on this in the future. We'll see how it goes, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.